Finally, the hadith from the Holy Prophet sallallahu wasallam who says, Ashura is tomorrow night, and 40 days later is Arba'in. The Prophet has said that a person who devotes himself sincerely to God for 40 days, streams of wisdom will flow from his heart to his tongue. A person who devotes himself to Allah for 40 days. I'm not saying we should start tomorrow. I'm not saying we should start the day after. And I'm not saying we should have started yesterday. But on the day of Ashur, let us make it a point that for 40 days until Arba'een we devote ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm not even implying that after 40 days we go back to our normal self. But if we do it truly for the sake of Allah, then we see the change in our own selves after 40 days that everything we do is for His sake. <coughs> From Mecca to Kufa, there was a time where Imam Al-Hussein was sleeping and all of a sudden he gets up and he, he repeats three times Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon and his son Ali Akbar was there and his son Ali says oh my father why did you say Inna lillah three times and he says my son because I had a dream that there were dogs that were after us and there was one dog that was the most vicious of them all and I knew we are heading towards a place of no return and Ali Akbar says my father aren't we on the right path aren't we doing everything for the sake of Allah obviously the answer was yes but here Imam Hussein wanted the other people listening to the conversation to see what his son was saying and the reply that he was, give, was giving his son. So he told his son, yes, everything is for the sake of God. We're doing it for him. Then Ali Akbar says, then what do we have to fear? Why do we fear? It was so difficult for the people of Medina who looked at the face of Ali Akbar to see him go. Because what they saw in, in, the, in the son of uh, Hussein ibn Ali was the fact that Ali Akbar resembled the Prophet not only in the way that he looked but in the actions that he was doing. The sincerity of what Ali Akbar was doing reflected through his char character. It is said that whenever in Medina, the house of Ali Akbar, you would often see that the chimney, there was smoke coming out all the time. Why? Because he was filled with such compassion to help people for the sake of Allah. Whenever there was smoke coming out from the house of Ali Akbar, it was because he told his mother, Umm Layla, we have travelers, we have guests, let us feed them. This was the character of them. And when Imam al Hussein was leaving Medina, the people told him, Ya Mawla, please if you want to go, we understand you have to go. But leave Ali Akbar because without him, the city of Medina is nowhere. After the Prophet, he is the only person who reminds us we are close to the Prophet because of him. But Imam Hussein said, no, he has a very important role to play in the destiny that we have. On the day of Ashur, it is said that Imam al Hussein said to his son Ali, recite the Adhan. You know why? Because he wanted to send a message to the enemies. When Ali Akbar recited the Adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and he said, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, he was sending a message to the enemies, do you realize who we are? Do you know we are the family of the Ahlul Bayt? Do you not see the resemblance of the Holy Prophet who is reciting the Adhan today? And you yet come here and want to kill us, want to annihilate us. This was the message that he was sending to them. Are you truly doing what you are doing for the sake of God? Is that your intention? Is that your niya? When all the companions had gone, people had come to ask Abu Abdullah al-Hussein, the family members, can we go and fight? Can we go and fight? But he 
he said no to everybody except his son Ali. Because he did not want a situation to come whereby somebody said, you sent your son the last. No. He sent his son Ali first on the battle plains of Karbala from his family members. Ali comes to his father. My Imam, my father, my Mawla. The companions have gone. Zuhair ibn Qayn has gone. Muslim ibn Awsaja, Habib ibn Madahir. Will you allow me to go and fight? Imam al Hussein looks at him. His son is about 18 years old. And he says, My son, go and fight. But before you go, seek permission from your aunt Zainab because she is the one who raised you. In some riwayat it is said, Umm Layla was in Karbala. In another riwayat it says she wasn't in Karbala. But because Bibi Zainab raised Ali Akbar, he had to go and seek farewell. The ladies were in the tent, they were in tears because now they knew all the companions had gone. It was only the Ahlul Bayt that was remaining. It was only a matter of time whereby the ladies would be alone. When Ali Akbar enters the tent, Zainab is looking outside and she sees him. Truly has my son Ali come to ask farewell for the final time? Ali Akbar looks down, my aunt Zainab, give me permission to go. She hugs him. You have my blessings, my son Ali. Go. Ali Akbar goes with tears in his eyes to his father. And it was enough for Imam Al-Hussein to see the face. He takes his hand, puts him on the horse. Farewell, my son. Ali Akbar looks behind at his father, not knowing whether he is going to return or not. He does his final farewell salutations to his father and he goes towards Karbala, towards the plains. All of a sudden, he's aware that someone is walking behind him. He turns around, he sees Imam Hussein is walking at the back towards the horse. Ali turns around, around he says, my father, haven't we said farewell to each other? Imam al Hussein replies, he says, yes, my son, we have said farewell to each other. But if only you knew what a father like me was doing, sending a son like you to a place where he knows he's not going to return. If, if only you knew how I was feeling inside right now. Ali Akbar says, my father, please go back. But I will give my salutations to Ali ibn Abu Talib and to the Holy Prophet when I meet them first. He goes to the battlefield and he puts on a brave fight. It is said that there was a point in time where Ali Akbar comes back to his father. He says, my father, I am thirsty. Ali, my son, I can't give you anything. But take this ring that I have and put it in your tongue. And he says his final farewell to, to his father, father once again. Ali puts on a brave fight. It is said that as he is fighting, there is a person with a spear who is waiting for the opportune moment. He takes the spear just the way that the person who killed Hamza did. He takes the spear and he waits for that moment and he lodges it into the chest of Ali Akbar. When it goes inside the chest and people know that he can no longer fight, they start sending arrows all around his body. As he falls down, he says, Alaykum min salam. Oh my father, come to my help, come to my help. He falls down from the horse. Imam al Hussein moves forward. Forward. My son, my back is broken. But in some cases it is said that Imam al Hussein had to stand up and sit down three times. My son, I cannot even come towards you. Call me where you are. He goes towards and he sees Ali lying on the sands of Karbala. He takes his head and he puts it on the lap. But you know what? Ali ibn al Hussein is putting one of his hands on the chest because when he fell down, the spear got lodged inside his heart, but he had to remove that stick that was there. Imam al Hussein looks at his son and he says, Why do you have one hand on your chest, my son? And he does, he does not want to remove it. But Imam al Hussein takes the hand of his son and he removes it and he sees the spear that is lodged inside. He turns towards his father. He says, My father, it was easy for you to remove the gates of Khaybar. But why don't you come to Karbala and see what I have to do to my son? He takes the spear out and that was the last breath that his son Ali Akbar took. Assalamu alaikum, ya Ali ibn al Hussein. على لعنه الله القوم الظالمين إن لله وإن إليه راجعون
Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that at least for 40 days we devote ourselves, our hearts, our minds up until the time of Arba'een so that we can see proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is said that ikhlas is one of the highest stations a man can reach if he does everything for God. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.